Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left. Hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse. I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. Yeah, I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm gonna be in that winter circle someday. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this episode of What a Horse. And once again, uh -oh. we have resurrected him. He has come back. Tommy is here. Alive. 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 I'm good. I'm He's good. He's kicking. Right. He's walking. What about snow? No. Oh, Do I we don't get want enough more. snow? I don't want no more. Golly, hey. Moses. What the hell what was that all about? I want everybody to know Timberlake's made it right. Who? The people up in, in Gatlinburg. What'd they do? Oh, they, they, that's your condo. They, they, oh, yes, okay. They, they said they were, the guy that owned it called and said he apologized. He didn't realize that's that to, happened. That's how to do it. Just talk to the big man. But they, Say they, sorry he, and go real, on. Real nice fella. He really was. And he was very humble. I mean, it was a good conversation. Let me put good. it like that. I tell you what. what we, got, we got a lot going on, but we're going to take a short pause for our sponsors. Then we're going to come back because we've got some great announcements. And I got a little video, especially from Marty Irby. Good. Let's take a look. Right. Take we'll a be look. right back. <laughs> Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And KB Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. Six-time world champion in amateur and open competition, four-time amateur world grand champion, and 2019 world grand champion. Standing at stud for Joanne Dowell at Fantasy Farm in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Call 931-389-6983 for breeding information. Come one, come all, that's the motto at the new Feed for All store on Highway 64 East. Feed for All is family owned and operated by Christy and Eddie Guthrie along with their son Joe. This family will be available to serve your daily needs for all your agriculture animal feeds. Their goal is to provide feed in bulk or buy the bag wherever it is needed and will always be a phone call away. Christy and Eddie have always been very selective in the quality of the feed their animals were fed and their satisfaction with the Feed for All products is their guarantee. You will be satisfied as well. Watch your horses come running when you break out the Feed for All horse feed. Give Feed for All a call today at 931-492-4609 or stop by their store located at 2392 Highway 64 East in Shelbyville, Tennessee and pick up a load of feed today. Joe is ready to load it for you. Uh, feed for All, so good. Let's return back to Jerry Harris and his guests on What a Horse. All right, welcome back. Tell you what. What we got? We've got Sugar Creek, formerly Rising Star, is going to have a barn party and a first look February the 5th. Starts at 10 a.m. in the morning. I like that start time, buddy. Yep. In the morning. Rowdy Ranch you, is doing the food. You got it. They do an awesome job right around doing the food. I'm I don't going, care if there's not a horse there. Right. It, it's worth the food. Well, it's a cult preview. Everybody, you know, it's a, <laughs> I mean, it's a cult yeah. party. We're, and, and so I'll be there announcing, and when we'll have music or what have you, but we'll have... Uh, don't ain't no music, got good food and good horses. Right. Whatever two-year-old you bring doesn't necessarily have to be anything that's bred there. 
So it's a, it's an open kind of deal. No commissions, I'm mean, nothing like that. It's a straight up. It's not a sale. It's it's a you know coat party. Per, per, like coat party. You want to it'll be a big deal. It's their first event too. They'll be yeah. they'll put well, it on the dog. Hey, there'll be a. I'm looking forward to it myself. Contact David Williams, 931-639-1081. Tell him what you want and what you want to eat and all that good stuff. Oh, he he good is taking order, right? <laughs> no, Rowdy, you, hey, listen, those guys put out a good hey, they, table they, of food now. They, they, when they put the food on the table, it's, on, it's, it's yeah. good. After that, we've got the walking horse. It's Alabama Auxiliary yeah. Barn Party, and it's moved. It's moved to the live, uh, oh. Limestone Livestock Company. Nathan, oh, well, uh, in it's, Athens. Uh, Brandon Tate. Yeah. It's, uh, well, you can contact Brandon Tate at 256 431 5184 or Nathan Clark at 256 505 1210. They have a big event, and it's all about Camp Smile a Mile. That's okay. it. Chicken they, in a Box. Your Walking Horse Association of Alabama. Of Alabama is self-supporting by their own contributions. I know it. So they are. They do an amazing job, and they'll give fifty to sixty thousand bucks. I mean, around. To, to camp, yeah, to camp smile to, to this. So it's a good thing they have a great auction, a stuffy auction, and items, and you know it's that's worth that, going because in, in the good. We've been down there, man. You've been yeah. down there several times. Oh, yeah, really, really well nice. worth it. Yeah. Then we've got the Walking Horse Trainer Association Blue Ribbon Two-Year-Old Sale. That's going to be February 18th and 19th out at Pleasant Valley. But now they're going to have a preview Friday at 3 p.m. This and, coming? No, 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 the no. Friday before. Okay, yeah. I got you. Yeah, Friday before on the 18th, and then on the 19th, starting at 10 a.m., they're going to have a sale. Yeah. You can contact Lane Leverett, 931 675 one two six one or Billy Young at nine zero three three one two eight three four eight. I guarantee you that's gonna be that's gonna be a good one. It'll that, be that a good one. it'll be a good one uh, for many reasons. Uh, one is the Colts that are going this next year. I mean, they qualify to sell. It's that's two years it. because it's after January first. Uh, there's a bunch out there too. Hey, there's a bunch of good ones. There's a bunch out there, and there, and there, there are a bunch of good ones. Well, there's several already sold that will probably turn around and sell again. Oh, no doubt about it. No uh, doubt about it. The market's good. Yeah. Bob Kugel always said if the stock market was above 14000 we'll sell big-time two-year-olds. Well, now it's 34000 35000 you know, we should tell. We'll see what Bob Kilgore knows. See, Bob's about. right. <laughs> Bob's usually right. Bob, if you're right, we're on, buddy. He, he, he's usually dead on the money on that. You know, that you got to watch that market and that play money starts growing. Oh, yeah. So I'll tell you something else. I, I just now said it. that uh, I want to show a video while we've got talk time to where we can discuss this. Okay. Marty Irby did an interview where he was talking about all the things we do to a horse mm -hmm. when it comes to shoeing. So I got my good buddy Jeff Duke, who shoes quite a bit of mine, and talked to him about just showing what they do to make a package. Mm -hmm. Now, th this is a package. Everybody talking about all these nails in a horse's foot. Here's where the nails go, people. <laughs> they're not in the horse's foot. What they're looking at here, and they say, well, that's a weird looking shoe. What the, this is what we call half metal. Yeah. So half of that will be metal and the other half will be rubber. And then you've got lot, the very package few, on there. Uh -huh. Then you've got the package on top of it. Right, right. Now sometimes you have full metal, which is a full shoe, two corks. Half metal is what they're doing right here. Then you have full rubber. Probably 80%, 75 to 80% of the show intensity walking horses that are padded performance are going to go half metal or full rubber. Sell them do you see a full shoe. Right. Now that's what he's doing now. Yeah. He's cutting the rest of the shoe out. Now that's a that's a tire that goes on your car. And, and Tommy, here here's what a lot of people don't realize. Right. The walking horse has the least problems with their horse's leg than any other breed. Of course. And right here is one of the reasons why. We don't have those problems because we don't put the strain on them that a lot of people think. So this right here is part of it. Right. It just it, it amazes me how what you, you can well, show people what what they do is they're trying. You got the Herbies and the and the 
congressional levels and this full colon down there in Memphis, they go on only what they're told, and nine times out of ten, what they're told is wrong, and, and, and on top of that, they'll stretch that. Like CNN. Well, right. So it's yeah. just like what we saw when we had those hearings on the Tennessee Walking Horse. We saw them present a chain that we'd never show with, right. a set of shoes that no that was only <laughs> showed up as a sale in Sparta. Nobody's ever shown with those shoes. No. Nope. And so uh, that's only when you, when you have a tool and all it is is dishonesty, then, you know, karma comes around eventually. It well, takes you know a while. The, the truth, Tommy, and, and I mean this is it. If the only proof you got is a made-up lie, then, then you, you, ain't you ain't got much, ain't got you, much you, at all. No. You ain't got much at all. Right here is, now you, they're just building the shoe. This, this will attach to a foot pad on the horse. Right. But the foot pad will have no more nails in it than, eight. than a regular old, yeah. regular old keg shoe. It'll have six to eight nails, and then they'll yeah. have the band, which more or less like a pair of shoe strings. Just holds, they, holds it in the, place. Holds yeah. it in place. But people don't want to accept the care that goes to building this. Yeah. They'll take an x-ray of that and say every nail that he nails into that package is in the horse's foot. It's not. And what got me was Marty Irby, who has been in this industry for years, he knows this, but yet to pacify his buddies or whoever, mm -hmm. he'll sit there and he'll tell a lie like he, like he tells. And we're going to also show there's a picture of the bottom of the horse's foot because he made the statements about the sharp objects put in. You can go ask any vet that has any sense at all, any knowledge, what would happen if you put a sharp object in a horse's at the bottom of a horse's foot. Lamias immediately. Yeah, it's gonna be the same thing if you put a sharp object in yeah. the bottom of yours. If right. you don't believe it, put a rock in your shoe and try to run. Right. That's what you're looking at. There is no running, there is no gait, there's a lot of limping. But people don't want to accept that. They would rather accept the lie because it sounds worse. Right. I tell you what, Jeff That's why uh, advertising on Tornado watches are higher than they are on uh, just the regular old temperature. Oh, yeah. I mean, fear sells. I mean, you know, fear sells. Fear and, fear and, and the, the, I don't know what, a terrorism sells. Mm -hmm. Fear is a very high commodity. So he's, he's, what, that's a foot pad. All he's going to do there is match it up and, and uh, grind it to the proper size. That's it. Of the top. Then it'll turn around and it'll go four and four on each side, and that's the only that's the only metal attachment you've got other than the band that, that you've got to the shoe. They hold on relatively well. Oh yeah. What you'll find out at the celebration big shows, a lot of times you'll find out that the ones that throw a shoe is usually a heavy end flat shot horse. A lot right. of times. A lot they'll, of times. They'll throw is. those shoes. Well, it, it, even if a horse throws a shoe, a lot of times they will reset the horse out in the center ring. But a lot of times, and people that go to horse shows, they've seen this too, they will see them walk off, that they take them out. If they have an issue, yeah. that's yeah. only, like if you, for instance, somebody would say, why do they do that? Well, A, sometimes it's back-to-back -back horses. They got a horse here to come in or two here to come in. Right. They don't sit out there and shoot the horse. Second thing is, if the horse has a, uh, if it's an older horse, if it requires a special kind of shoeing or what have you, they don't want to reshoe it right then in the center ring. You know, they, you know, some horses, if they've had a hoof that has uh, had a damage to it, they, you know, it's legal to put it on one side to make sure that it's shaped right. and just perfect and pristine, and they don't have time to do that. So well, they'll pass one out sometimes. People don't. It's kind of like our violations. Everybody that they hear a violation, they think it's abuse. It ain't. Sometimes it's minor things like foreign substance, sub, which is, is spray. Proof and pudding. Uh, look here. Yeah. Everybody, this is the bottom of a horse's foot. Yeah. If It's going to be just like yours. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a regular shoe on a horse. Mm -hmm. That's 
frog in the middle, those grooves on each side, they, they yeah. clean them out. And count the nails. Yeah. Because that's as many nails as will go in any of them. Some of them only have six. Right. But that right there will show you that's what the pad will have when it goes on the horse. That's all, and all it is is those nails. So, that's it. So, and, a, and a band to hold in place. What I will tell everybody, if you want to be educated on a horse, go to a barn and get educated. Don't accept crap like this. Yeah. It's a lie. It, it's a total lie. There's only eight nails that goes in that horse's foot, period. And it doesn't, it goes in where it's supposed to go in that they've gone in since the 1800s when we first started shoeing them. Somebody so, always says, well, why do they get excited when they first get their shoes on? Here's an example. You ever seen a nice lady getting ready to go get dressed and go somewhere and she's running around the house, you know, just in flat-footed, yep. whatever? Let her put her heels on and this euphoric bloom comes out in her. Same thing with horses. They, th that extra inch or two or two, three, two and a half, three inches might get them to where they can look over the top rail of the stall. Give them another little area in the barn they can mm -hmm. see just by having those shoes on. Or they know that they're going to get out of the stall more. They are very, horses are very perceptive. Oh, yeah. But, so I they're mean, getting those new shoes on that day. They're excited. They're I've excited had, about it. I've had more than one rider tell me that when they go down that chute at the celebration, that you can feel their horse kind of blow up. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm telling you, Mr. Harlan told me that one time. He said, Jerry, it's the best feeling in the world when Absolutely. you feel that. And I believe that. I, I truly believe it. The way you feel breeds into what the animal's going to feel. That's why everybody says, well, the horse hates me and he throws me. Yeah. Well, he, the horse smells pheromones. Yeah. It smells uh, the fear coming out in you. And then get scared itself. That's well, they what, showed that on Yellowstone. Yeah, of course. When, when Beth scared of a horse, and Walker showed her why not to be scared and why the horse was scared of her. Exactly. I tell you what, we've had education for the day, people. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's all the education you get. We're going to do a blast from the past Let's starting right now. Let's I want you to watch this. Strolling that, Jim. Hey, world grand champion, Strolling Jim. Was a gilding. Was a gilding. He didn't sire the first offspring. Never sired the first offspring. And the first uh, stain we get to come along, believe it or not, was uh, Midnight Sun. Midnight Sun. So, you went through a few geldings and mares. Actually, the first world grand champion is as Haynes that, Peacock. That's him, Haynes Peacock. That's currently where the, that's Jack Haynes riding. That's currently where the Saturn plant, General Motors, is in Spring Hill. Haynes that was 40 Peacock. and 41. Exactly. Colonel Jack Haynes, he is your rider. They have changed a lot since then. Here's Melanie Maid. That farm, that is actually out there in front of Oakwood Acres in uh, Fayetteville. And uh, that time's owned by the car dealer over there, Mr. Rambo. And right here's the first one. The king of the hill. That's him. Midnight Sun. Red, that's Fred Walker on him right there. Red Laws was his famous groom, you know. Oh, yeah. Red Laws. That's Fred Walker on him. And you're going to see Mrs. John T. Carter, I think, right here in a minute. Up in East Tennessee, Mike Carter, John T. Carter. I've seen a video one time of sure uh, on Toby Green's wife, Jimmy right. Green's mother, riding. That may, be the, that may be the one right here. That, that may be a set of Miss, Miss Carter. Okay, you're right. That is, this is Toby Green's daughter. No, it was Toby Green's first wife, Jimmy okay. Jimmy Green's mother. Okay, here we go. Riding Midnight Sun. I believe that's in this clip, or has been. You're, you're correct to me, you're, you're exactly right. Look at that canner. As you can tell, that's kind of over in the years a little bit. He's a little heavy on the weight. I don't know who this rider is. Is it Urban Small? I'm not sure who it is either. Mm -hmm. I've seen this. That, that was a little bit before my time. Yeah, this uh, would have been at least 1950. 
maybe earlier. I tell you what though, when you look at our horses, you now you'll see he had that braced tail. Yeah, we come a long way. We got a lot of we got a horse our granddad's dreamed about. Oh Lord, yeah. Uh -oh. Talk of the town. Now, this is talk of the town carrying the flag in celebration in 75. Mm. Now you can tell, because the track's dug up. <laughs> Good boy Shida, mm. Winston Wiser, celebration, 55, 56. B Major Wilson. Look at here. Now, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he was an amateur, wasn't he? Yeah, first one. Sure was. Betty Sane, I mean, I think it, that you could have considered that an amateur, but... B. Major Wilson, amateur rider, board. Barry Coffey was on that crew. Mm -hmm. Lyndon Bean, look at uh, LBJ. Lyndon Johnson presenting the roses at the celebration. Ebony, Ebony Masterpiece. Masterpiece. Sam Pascal. H.L. World, which is involved in Stanley Home Products. Mm -hmm. He's the guy that owned it. Saw two stock farm, Gulletsville. Billy Hale owned him too, one time. Then S.W. Beach owned him twice. Shakers, shocker. 66 champion of the world. Four year old. Betty Sane. Frank G. Clement, my cousin, makes mm -hmm. a presentation. How about that? To a shaker shocker. They say that crowd was going crazy. Ebony Center, 1969. It was raining. Were you there that night? You better believe I was. I was about drowned. Yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, I had just come home. Myron Wilson, a sensation, 1970 champion of the world. Wayne Gruber makes the ride. Owned by Sugarloaf. Atlanta, Georgia, around the Robinson family. Okay. He was a little bit aggressive. He would nibble. He'd bite a little, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Steve Hill had one like that too called the El Dorado. That rascal right there would, he would nibble so much that the next year they had him on display, you couldn't even stick your little finger in the, <laughs> had a little grate where you couldn't even, I wanted to pet him. That was, that was not gonna happen. Sensational shout out Charlie Bobo. Actually, uh, Mr. Davis owned both of these horses yeah. at one time. Well, Wallace Brandon trained this one yeah. the year before. Mm -hmm. Sure did. I believe he was reserved the year before, wasn't he? Could have been. I believe he was. Wallace on him. Handshake of Delight. That's the first World Grand Champion that I watched win. Well, he was Remember, a good one. Yeah, they called him brown. He wasn't actually black. He was a chocolate color brown. Kind of like Delight of Pride. Mm -hmm. Right Delight's there is around. Delight bumming around. He, strangely enough, he was in one of the first crop of Tennessee Walking Horses that Billy Gray ever broke. Not one of few, but the first group. Right there, Ronnie Spears, another masterpiece. I've got, that was the last year the boots were wore. Right. Sure was, I've got those boots or I had them. Julie Starr. Ramsey Bullen. 86 champ of the world. That was a wild night. I remember it vividly. Oh yeah, there was another victory pass made during oh, yeah. that night. <laughs> I saw one of the participants the other day. <laughs> Jerry Lewis and Chad, we sure did. We have called a timeout. No, we no, we have we had a workout. So we had. Oh yeah. Wonder who took this video. Like somebody that over was, on the west side. Yeah, you know, that was some. They was on the ground. That was wow. Up. This is up close. I've never seen Long this before. Long time ago. I don't think WDA did that because we. I have got video from.
Tommy, I've got it from so many places. Oh, it's yeah. not funny. Yeah, whoever this is is on B, like C Row, got a good spot. Whoever it is thinks Jubilee Star is going to win, and he does. There, that was, he was a part of a collection of horses that was sold that year. Dr. Burris Bochel dispersed. He owned part of it. He owned him. Pride's Pride and Joy was one of them. Uh, several that sold out of that crew. Bob Parks bought this fine horse. He went on and won the big stake. There's Pride's Hurricane, Jim McConnell, right next to him. That is a long time ago, 1986. Well, I'm gonna tell you, it, never, it does not matter years who's ago. in there. Yeah. If Jimmy thinks you're putting on a good show, he's coming he's after coming, you. He's coming, he's gonna be, he's gonna <laughs> he's be bouncing gonna, off of you. He, he's gonna be on your butt. Look at the pack stands. I mean, pack, pack. Hey, I can remember when you could not budge in that place. This must have been the stud class, or what are we doing? This must have been the stud class. Sure was. Well, I've never seen this one, Jerry. You pulled this out of the hat. One of them old ones, bud. That is an old one. Never seen this one. That's the stud night. That's That would have been the first Saturday. That place is packed that night too, look. And folks are everywhere. Well, you know, we're getting back to where more and more people are in the stands, and, and I really like it. I show Well, we got so it. much going on. I mean, parents are, are spread thin between events for kids. You yep. know, COVID, golly. I mean, COVID is One thing and then another. And one thing and another, yeah. Okay. We're going to get back to it, though. Oh, yeah, we will. We're going to take a short pause for our sponsors, and we'll be right back with some more of the past World Grand Champions. Tired of paying for monthly telephone service, expensive long-distance bills, and all those crazy taxes? Are you sick of spending money on telephone equipment, maintenance contracts, and service calls, all for a phone system that shackles you to 100-year-old technology and your desk? Stop it. It's time to ship your phone system to the cloud. What can the cloud do for you? Bring together remote offices, workers, and employees in the field. Make sure that you'll never miss calls by delivering them to multiple devices. Modernize faxing by allowing multiple faxes to be sent and received at once and delivered to email. Get your voicemail messages instantly through email, too. And take advantage of an endless supply of customizable features. Post My Calls can deliver the cloud. All of this technology with low upfront costs and not one penny in capital expense. It's time for a phone solution you'll truly love from Post My Calls. Call the number below. The Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect horse to bring a family together for fun-filled days and nights of competition. From the youngest and the smallest in the family to the oldest and the biggest, the Tennessee Walking Horse provides an avenue for the entire family to enjoy competing together. If you ride one today, you will own one tomorrow. I don't want anybody to forget the winner circle. They have free shipping for any order over $100, and they do support our industry on a regular basis. So please remember the winner circle when you're getting your equine needs. Let's get back to Water Horse and watch some more videos. <laughs> All right. Tommy, you just found out some good information. Got some good information. My buddy Dave Roberts. Uh, yeah. We were talking about the yeah. sale he had at Wiser Farm, 43 Highway. Mike Tibbs and Dave Roberts had over there. I wanted to know the the, the percent, the number. Right. I wanted to know the high price. I, I was there for a little while and saw 
some high price, some mm -hmm. very high prices. Twelve thousand was the winner. Twelve thousand was the high, and that was Rich Playboy. And ninety-two percent sold. Ninety-two percent sold rate, which is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, the money's out there to buy horses. Hey, these, these were these were pleasure horses too, people. Pleasure horses. Coins Hard Cash, eighty-seven champion of the world. You know why I remember this one? What? The night David and Teresa got married was this very night. Is that their right? anniversary is. Well, David, this is for you. That's their anniversary was the night Coins Hard Cash. They got married that day. They did not go to the horse show. I did. And David Cranick had videotaped the big stake, and I got to watch it in an RV. Mm -hmm. I wasn't there live. In an RV. <laughs>
Loved showing, loved attention, craved attention. That was his deal. He is putting on the reds. By a horse named Command Performance. You know what his original name was? What? Desert Storm Commander. That's Rich's original name. That's what he was originally Desert called. Desert Storm Desert Commander. Desert Storm Commander was the original name of he's putting on the reds. That was his name. The big story doesn't end right here with him, as you know. Billy Gray was made available to bring him back and exhibit him 10 years later. Yeah. And retired him 10 years later. We got all that video. We've shown that before, and we should show it again, Jerry. Santana. Bob Prize Generator out of the Great Mayor Santana Woman. Well, I'm sure everybody noticed we did not get all of the World Grand Champion. No, I like the ones you did get, though. Well, there, there was one that I really wanted, but I, I never could get a video of it. And I tried, Judy Young was going to get me a video, but she said that she could not find her tape. Now, what was know, it? Which one do you think? Mountain Man. Mountain Man. Yeah. Now, I got a it's picture somewhere. I've got, I've, got a, I've got them coming in. That's about it. Well, now, yeah. Mountain Man is in Billy Gray's, or Billy Nipper's warm-up ring print. Right, yeah. Now, he's on the rail. RPM. RPM 1999. He was a big old rascal. Oh, yeah. We did some videos on him out at uh, Larry Lowman's. Rattlewood, Larry, yeah, Rattlewood. absolutely. The stallion manager at the time at Rattlewood was the father of the assistant to Dr. Christy Gillum now that we see at Sugar Creek basically every day. Darian Williams, a photographer. Yeah. The, her dad was a stage manager at the time, right when this was taken, at Bridalwood. Scott Williams, I believe his name is Scott. Great guy. Well, I know Got that famous hat on. That white hat. Larry was the first one to um, Cash for Keeps, 2000 Champion of the World. Ray Gilmer makes a ride for the Bronner family, Win Arkansas. Cash for Keeps. Sit back in the bridle, Ray Gilmer. Buy coins hard cash. Cash for Keeps, 2000 Champion of the World. Making a victory pass. The Harold Bronner family again win Arkansas. They were the proud owners that year that was in 2000. A great Tennessee walking horse, Ray Gilmer. PJ Womble taking the photo for Voice Magazine. Prize Jubilee Encore. Alan Callaway makes a ride. Dennis Terry and Pedigo, Shovable. Marstown and Murfreesboro. 
All the proud owners. Big Al Callaway. Alan Callaway Shovel making his victory pass on Prize Jubilee Encore. Actually, he is a brother to Skywatcher out of the same way. Out on parole. 2002 champ of the world, world grand champion. This is Steve Dunn making a ride by pushers doing time out of a gold coin mare. Out on parole. Whole nine yards, 2003. On his ninth performance. Whole nine yards wins. Black Nightshade wins, 04. Jim oh, McConnell. Yeah. Boy, he can sit back here and just. Hey, he could. Not, I back mean, there and do it. Main Power, 05. That was the year that NYPD did not counter. Is that correct? That's it. Sure didn't. Joe Cotton makes the ride. Main power. Gus yeah. King, Neil Holland, and Bob Kilgore family. I have seen Debbie Eichler sit down in the stall with that horse laying down, sit there, and her and him both eat watermelon. I don't doubt it. Sure did. She loved that horse. When they pulled his little shoes off, he had a little ring. You know, he mm -hmm. wasn't big at all. He was a no. little pony. And he looked like when they turned him out in his little bitty portable <laughs> ring, <laughs> yep. he looked like a little pony. Well, and he was, basically. Oh, yeah. He was a pony. But he was a little bitty thing. But the wall, look here. He was a walking machine. You know, he sired a lot of good horses, too. Main power? Too. Yes, yeah. sir. Sure did. I had a couple of real nice ones. Master Jazz, 07, champ of the world. Jim McConnell makes the ride. Contender Farms, Fort Worth, Texas. One of the owners at the time. I knew he, he was a good horse, loved him. I knew as soon as we started the show today, I'd get a call from the guy I've been waiting on to call for for two weeks. Oh, that's how you do it. <laughs> you get something busy. That's how to do it, yeah. I'm not so sure Jimmy's not going to be tough to beat this year, too. Hey, he's going to be hes going to be awfully tough to beat. He's going to be right in there with him. El Nino. Here's another little one. Yeah, he produced. He's got oh, one yeah. out there now. Uh, Category 5. Yep, and also uh, got Batman. Mm -hmm. Batman's about El Nino. He'll be out there showing this year. It'll be pretty good. Look here. Cocky little horse. Link Web. He makes the ride. That's the night the little horse beat the big horse. Yep. Make a little victory pass right here. Draw the 08 celebration to a close. We had big crowds back then. Oh yeah, what are you talking about? I mean, we, our crowds didn't really start to dwindle until 06. 06 when they didn't crown a world grand champion put a dent in him. Well that put hurt. A dent, put a dent in the back 10 rows. It really did. The back 10 rows won't see. This was a great win right here. Oh yeah. You Watch know what he'd have won before this? What? Brownsville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. They took him to Brownsville. Mr. Johnson bought him to, as an amateur horse. Basically. Well his first name was what? His uh Titan. The Titan, but he had one before that called Watch Me Now or something. Mm -hmm. So this became easy, Watch It Now Win, you know, mm -hmm. W-I-N. Changed his name to that, 
put it, Jimmy picked him up, and they said, well, I believe I can win the big stake with it. Let me try it. And guess what? He did. Champ of the world, yeah. But he came, the only time he showed a recognition was maybe the year before at Jackson and then that year at Brownsville. Brownsville, Tennessee, a little country horse show. Buy Skywatch. Here's another Skywatch. The coach and Billy Gray. He turned in to be a good breeder. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. He was a really good breeder. Boy, I mean, it's great. Golly. He was fun, full of, full of uh, opinions. Game world. I called this in Columbia. When he won Columbia? When he won, when, no, when he come through the gate in Columbia, yeah. that's when we, a bunch of us standing there talking, I said, there ain't nothing right now that can beat that. And they and, didn't. And, and they didn't, they didn't. He sold us a yearling in 2006. <clears throat> it was the morning after that he didn't have a horse show. We were worried to death that we didn't even sell a horse that day. And uh, Tommy Grader had a little pep talk with us and this colt came in, he looked like a million dollars. He brought, I think, 9,800 Chester Stokes bought him as a baby with no trainer there with him. They thought he was too small and he was this and he was that. But look, he I tell you what, when he, came, when he came in up there at Columbia, oh, yeah. he was walking the dog, buddy. Game World by Mind Games and I've America called Pushers. Uh, Cover my world, color my world, pushers color my world. There was two mama. horses at two different times that came in up at Woodbury, up at Columbia, that when they come in, the night they come in up there, you knew. Right there, walk time Charlie. Boy, they did it. Hey, he was. I remember the rock pile, he was cantering and went over the rail. This one? Yes, sir. Yeah. He just took him out. Just come right back. Next show was right First there. time I ever seen him when they brought, we had him as a yearling over at Rousey Star or whatever. But they brought him to Waterfall as a two-year-old. Rocky McCoy started him. And uh, had him as a two-year-old uh, from Bob uh, Standard, I think was the guy that owned him at the time. He ended up with Calicut, you know. Calicut yeah. had him, showed him the three-year-old at the trainer show. I tell you what, he is a walking booger. Sit back there and chunk. Well, by line with cash. Yeah. He could flip just lost, walk and get it done. His, we just lost his dad. I am Jose, Jose. three-time champion of the world. Look at here. He won, won, and then won again. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna tell you what, go out there right now, pull him out of that stall. You'll, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, if they ever had that rule where you show one back and not have to qualify, yeah. I'm not saying he couldn't do it. I saw him in Revival the other day, both of them. And this summer gun right here just looks stellar. Hey. Fresh. He and the people, the, he, uh, the uh, same owner owns both, Revival uh, and this one. I know. Debbie Wood. Good people. Oh, man. Real good people. Good for the horse business, too. Good, you know that'll hang with their horse. Boy, and he's a producer too. Golly Moses. I mean a top producer. My brother's got a, B. John's got a great Philly buyer right now. I want to do a video with him and Jose. Mm-hmm. They're out there together. I know, but I, I want, got, we go, got some video in there of Jose. Do you? <laughs> yes. I want to put them in, put show them because they're just about identical. Yeah. So we they got, look great. You, go ahead, you got Jose Revival and, uh, and I am right there together. Oh, yeah. We got a commercial. We'll be right back after this moment. You 
made the time and the sacrifice to broaden their horizons, to see their smiles, but mostly to make lifelong memories. We think it's time to do it again, just the two of you. Don't let illness or injury slow you down. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. You know, my friends think I know everything there is to know about the walking horse industry. And I do know a lot, but not everything. I do know one thing, though. My father told me I could find out anything I needed to know about this industry by going to walkinghorsereport.com. And you know what? He was right. Everything from single night shows to multi night shows, sibling and progeny searches, rider cup standing, stallion reports. They even have a calendar of shows for the entire year and all the current news. It's all right there at the tip of my fingers when I go to walking horsereport.com. You know, they could do it themselves, but I don't think I'm going to tell them. Let's just keep them wondering how I know so much. Let's get back to Jerry and his guests on what a horse. <laughs> We got some more. Let's go. We ain't done. Champion of the world. Let's go. Let's get them. We're, we're going to show some more of them. And, and some of these are right now are standing like uh, like uh, I am Jose. Yeah. They're out rising. Well, they're out Sugar, Sugar Creek. Sugar Creek. I, I'm going to have a problem. No, you'll be all right. I'll, I'll eventually get it. Sugar you'll, Creek. You'll I'll just fine. look it. Look at her honors. Yeah. Honors. 2016 World Grand Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the final ride of our 78th I'll tell you what, there never has been a horse that deserved it more, that had to fight as hard as this horse did to get in something that he deserved. And he, uh, the great thing is, uh, the great thing is uh, he's producing in the ring. He's got a world grand champion out there now. I don't know. Just about honors. That's the key. You take these big, this wasn't the case years ago. No. We didn't necessarily have the big state winner producing a lot of great horses. You can't name a lot of Ace Station or Station Shatter or another masterpiece. I mean, there's not a lot in there. Go Boy Shatter. Go Boy Sundust. Now, right here, Jen's Black Maverick. Mm -hmm. All right. Black Jen. Now, he no longer breeds. Right. But uh, he's got some good ones, buddy. Man, he, percentage wise on great horses, he's got as high as anybody. I would put that stud out in a pasture with five or six real good mares and let Mother Nature tell them what they're going to do. Because I, I just believe that if, you know, sometimes that works. And sometimes, of course, it don't. the horse does not belong to me. But if he was mine, that's what I'd do. He, I don't know his uh, whole story. I don't know. Uh, but all I know is what I see, and I see all these coats that are buying bringing big money. Oh, yeah. And they the wall. Genomati. Hey, Genomati, here's an announcement. A lot of people know I put a lot of video up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. My number one watched video in 2021 was none other than Genomati. Being collected. Being collected. <laughs> 461,000 plus views oh, on Jenna Mighty. Bless her hearts. Easily, easily entertained. Mm -hmm. Here we go, right here. Mayhem. Now, the other horse I was telling you about, mm -hmm. when he came in up at Columbia, mm -hmm. I am Mayhem. Oh, yeah. He was, he came in up there, he looked great. Absolutely great. Rodney did a great job with him. That's a good horse. Yes, he is. A lot of people don't realize that that horse was amateur and world grand champion. Mm -hmm. Right here's Masters Razzling Jazz and John Allen Calloway, which we lost him. But a great animal. Relatively fast after he won the world well, grand championship. Well, we saw him. I guess that's like, Jim McConnell was one of the last ones rode him. Yep. Saw him down at the preview at uh, Alabama. At, well, no, uh, Abernathy's. Abernathy. But then he went to Alabama's too. Yeah. yeah. Went to Abernathy's and Jimmy rode him. A bunch of kids rode him and he was doing fine. Yeah. 
it just happens. You just Animals. you never know. I had a filly that just laid down, and died yeah. out in the pasture. Yeah, right happened. here. Justified honors. I was there, buddy. I watched this it. year's world grand champion. Champion of the world, justified honors. Taking that blue just down the road to Shubbleful. And Lisa Bond. Look at this rascal now. What you got to do with him, to appreciate him, you kind of got to get in a cross tie with him. I didn't know how big and pretty he was until I got, you know, they brought him out there and he stands out there at Sugar Creek. And they brought him out there and I got to look at him and I thought, man, you folks need to see you up close. Justified Honors, World Grand Champion, our current one. Current. And now we get to talk about 2022. We get to figure and out who's going to be. Jimmy McConnell. Jimmy's going to be tough. He's going to be. There's not going to be. Uh, Mac one's going to be tough to beat. And he's going to be tough. Jim, Jimmy McConnell. I, I, I never count him out. He's like Alabama. Everybody said George is going to beat Alabama. I said, don't count Nick out. Yeah. What happened? I watched it again this morning. Alabama beat him again. Of course. I don't. I'm looking forward to the playoff, to the final, the championship. Jimmy game. will do well, but there's also Magnifico. Don't there ever is. sell out, Mr. Kilgore. Never. I, I like that horse. I really do. But I'm, I'm going to have to tag Jimmy. I just, Jimmy. I, I love Jimmy's horse. And I don't, well, I no. love Jimmy. Wesley broke the horse. Hey, Jimmy, My son broke him. It is, he, he's got a, in that show ring, when he comes after you, Watch out, because mm -hmm. he's coming. Jimmy, Jimmy, betting on Jimmy in the show ring is like was like hiring the late John Norton as a divorce attorney. You mm -hmm. might never, you may, you may not mm -hmm. necessarily want to bet on him, but better either retain him or bet on him one because right. he's gonna win. Well, right here is horse of the year. That's him, reserve horse of the year. Hey, and, Mach one. And I'm telling you, in my book, he he's he's gonna be tough. Hard to beat. The only one thing. The oh, we owner, got a new owner here. Owner is not there anymore. It's got a new owner. Molly You're going to see him in the amateur. You're going to see him in the World Grand Championship. And Molly Walters' name is going to be beside him. Mm -hmm. that, I'm that, glad she did that. That's my prediction. She's had a few steak horses. She's yes, had she uh, a few that I like. She had that. Uh, pushing in line mm -hmm. horse. Yeah. She, she had some good ones. And she, her and Taylor support this industry a lot, and I support them. And I, I think buying that horse was a, was a good move. Let me tell you something funny. What? I just realized it. What? He pushing the line. Her two stake horses, Wesley Williams broke both of them. Pushing that line and Mach 1. She Mach 1 that. was, uh, his name was uh, uh, I'm Merle Haggard. That's what, that's what his name was. Well, we're, we're going to buy Merle Haggard right now because our time has expired. We're done. <laughs> we'll see everybody again next week. All right. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, What a horse! I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm gonna be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, please start talking.